Hello everybody. Today it is my third lecture of the module uh, 10 and uh, here I will discuss another two types of uh, approximate method. Earlier we have discussed release method and its extension as a release release method. Today I will discuss Galarkin method and finite difference method with some example. Now Galarkin method is actually a weighted residual method and basic difference with the release method is that Galarkin method we do not require any strain energy expression and it is uh, required to know the differential equation of the problem. However, the exact solution of the differential equation need not be known. So, how the method is developed? Method is developed from the virtual work principle. Uh, now let us discuss this, how the method is developed. Let L be the differential operator, which is different for different problems. And uh, we know that for this axial vibration of the bar, this L is A d square by dx square, where A is the this axial rigidity of the bar. Now you can see here A and E are taken as constant. So we can write like that. However, if it is not constant, then it will be under the differential sign, one differential sign that is d by dx A E, then d by dx. So now for this discussion, I am taking A E as a constant that is all uh, material properties and sectional properties are treated as constant here for developing the Galarkin method. However, it is not necessary that the sectional properties and material properties need to be taken as uniform. For torsional vibration of the bar, this differential operator L is gj d square by dx square whereas uh, this gj is the torsional rigidity. G is understood as a shear modulus which is dependent on this modulus of elasticity and poison ratio and J is the torsional constant. For bending vibration that L is EI d to the power 4 by dx to the power 4. Note the difference. The axial vibration and torsional vibration are second order second order differential equation whereas beam vibration problem is a fourth order differential equation. So naturally the operator L is different from the uh, axial and torsional vibration problem. In two dimensional problem whenever we encounter membrane we know that this L is T into del square where del square is a Laplacian operator and it is defined as For plate problem again we have this and T is the tension in the membrane which is taken uniform. L is equal to D del 4. Del 4 is the biharmonic operator. It is written as this like that del 4 by del x 4 2 del 4 by del x square del y square plus del to the power 4 del y to the power 4. So del 4 is the biharmonic operator that is used for the plate problem and plate problem is again a fourth order differential uh, equation is required to, uh, to formulate the plate problem, plate vibration problem as well as in membrane you have seen the second order differential equation but it is two dimensional both x and y dimensions are involved. Okay. Now uh, virtual work done by the inertia force. Let us uh, see that inertia force on a system. Say Wxt is the deflection in a structure. Okay. And then if the free vibration is assumed 
a harmony. For example, we have the deflection in a structure is assumed as Wx sin omega t. Then velocity will be omega Wx cos omega t that is first derivative of the w and the second derivative of w will give the acceleration. So, that will be omega square w x sin omega t. So, therefore, when we find the inertia force, the virtual work done by the inertia force is m omega square w del w dx. Okay. So, here uh, del w is the work done by the he, virtual work done by this inertia force. So, here with this capital W is a function of x. So, we can take the variation in inertia force you know that a mass into acceleration. So, it gives you this omega square w m. Okay. In one dimensional case, we can write L uh, the operator operating on the function w equal to plus minus m omega square w dx. Now, plus or minus this sign is to be adopted depending on the type of the problem. For example, it is uh, problem of axial vibration of bar or torsional vibration of shaft then minus sign has to be used and when it is a vibration or beam then this uh, plus sign has to be used. So, that we have seen from the differential equation for example, the partial differential equation for the beam is this. Okay. So, assuming this uh, free, uh, this displacement as capital Wx into sin omega t. So, we have this Ei then we if we uh, differentiate it two times then it becomes this minus omega square W m is there and w then uh, your uh, this equal to 0 ok. So, we can find it d to the power 4 by dx 4 equal to m omega square e i into w. So, that means uh, if m omega square w is the inertia force, then if I take transfer this to the right hand side, then it is to be taken plus in case of beam vibration. Whereas, in axial vibration which are second order differential equation, this uh, sign will be minus. Okay. Now, we know that virtual work done by this force is m omega square w del w dx. Okay. Now, here we can substitute this m omega square w by operator l operating on w. So, we can write del v equal to 0 to l, l that is the operator l operating on the function w into del w that is the variational quantity and then it is to be integrated with respect to dx. Okay. So, now equating this two, if I equate this two, I can write del v equal to integration 0 to l, this is operator l operating on the function w capital W plus minus m omega square capital W del w dx equal to 0. Now, let us assume that w is equal to c1 phi 1 x plus c2 phi 2 x plus up to c n phi n x where c1 c2 c n are arbitrary constants and 
phi 1 phi 2 phi x are assumed mode shape function or assumed displacement function that we take and these functions are chosen in such a way that it satisfies the boundary conditions of the structure whether it is beam shaft or this uh, the rod in axial vibration this phi should satisfy the prescribed boundary condition. Then we admit phi different phi here and compose a shape function w as a series c1 phi 1 x c2 phi 2 x plus dot dot up to c n phi n x. So that means this shape function can be written as c i phi i x i varies from 1 to n ok. Now if I uh, find the variation of w the del w delta w equal to phi 1 x delta c 1 plus phi 2 x delta c 2 like that phi n x delta c n. Now substituting this delta del w or delta w here substitute this here we are getting now integration 0 to l l w plus minus m omega square w integration phi 1 x that is we are substituting here. So phi 1 x delta c 1 plus phi 2 x delta c 2 plus dot dot phi n x delta c n dx equal to 0. So in the next step we find that delta c y c i i varies from 1 to n are arbitrary and not equal to 0. So we can now write each term of the summation as 0. So therefore we can write uh, for each i this integral 0 to l l uh, the operator l operating on the function w plus minus m omega square w phi i x dx equal to 0. Now there are different phi's to uh, compose the shape function. So w is equal to c1 phi 1 plus c2 phi 2 plus up to cn phi n. Now for each i we shall find one equation. So there will be n number of equations and uh, we want to solve for c1, c2 etc. So that our assumed mode shape function can be determined and necessary eigenvalues can be computed. Now here you can see that phi i x that are chosen is approximate. That means it does not satisfy. It is not necessary that phi i x should satisfy the differential equation. It must satisfy the boundary condition. Even if not boundary condition is not satisfied, the solution can be obtained but it will be very uh, crude solution. So, the phi x nature is such that it will satisfy the boundary condition but may or may not satisfy the differential equation. If phi x i x chosen is happen to satisfy both then we will get exact result that we find out from the solution of the differential equation. Now that phi i x when the assume shape function is substituted here that is w is now composed of different phi's and therefore w is actually the assumed. So we associate a subscript a to the w. So this is assumed mode shape function, assumed shape function. So when I use the assumed function in the differential equation the term inside the third bracket is not equal to 0, it will give some value which is known as residual error. So this is residual error, residual error. So that term that we have written here is a residual error because W is assumed as approximate shape function and it is not tested whether w is satisfying the differential equation or not. Only test that is carried out 
that W satisfies the boundary conditions. So therefore, the left hand side of this equation is error multiplied by the assumed function. So that means phi r epsilon r that is the residual error residual error multiplied by phi i x dx equal to 0 and integration that is integral of uh, this phi r phi i x in the domain 0 to l is 0 i varying from 1 to n. Now you can see the phi i x is nothing but uh, we have assumed that w a as a series so this is the assumed w a this is the assumed w a and if I compute this d w a this derivative of d w a by d c i that is coefficient c i. So, we will get phi i. So, therefore, this is nothing but weight that means residual error multiplied by the weight of the function and it is integrated 0 to l gives a 0 value according to virtual work principle. So, therefore, it is also said that error is orthogonal to the assumed mode shape function or the weight of the shape function. Now, let us see what are the steps that to be followed uh, to apply the Galerkin method in some problems, especially for model analysis to find out the natural frequencies and mode shape. Assume deflected shape first and this deflected shape is say C1 phi 1 x plus C2 phi 2 x plus C3 phi 3 x up to C n phi n x. Then find out this integral. This function should be operated on this uh, differential operator. If it is a this problem of this uh, axial vibration of bar, suppose in axial vibration of bar, axial vibration of bar, we have L is equal to A e d square by dx square. So, therefore, here w that L w that means here A e d square w a by dx square. So, that is the meaning of this expanded meaning of this. Then it should be multiplied by phi i x. If w a is composed of different phi then it has to be multiplied by phi i x that is the weight of the shape function and then it is integrated in the limit 0 to l and equate to 0 for particular this weight phi i. So, i varies from 1 to n as you have seen here. So, there will be n number of equations and we can find that this equation gives is eigenvalue problem. So, it will be resulting in this type of equation a matrix A which will be uh, formed because of the material properties and cross sectional properties etc. and the sectional uh, the dimension of the structure then lambda that is the frequency parameter will be here and then B is another matrix then C is the coefficient matrix that is C1, C2, C3 etc. So, for non-trivial solution of this equation, it is determinant of this matrix should be equal to 0. From that we get the multiple values of lambda i that is uh, if the shape function is assumed up to 2 terms then we will get lambda as two lambdas. So, first frequency and second frequency can be extracted. So, if I assume that shape function is composed of uh, this n number of uh, phi's then we will get n number of linear simultaneous equation and by solving this determinant we will get 
at nth degree polynomial in lambda, then we will be able to find the n number of natural frequencies. However, uh, if this shape function is assumed very close to the exact value, sometimes it happens and then your only one or two terms you will get very accurate results. But when the shape function is chosen which can only satisfy the boundary condition even only the geometric boundary conditions are satisfied then you will also get the estimate of the frequencies. However, the higher frequencies especially the second, third etc., may be erroneous even the first frequency will involve some error in the estimate. So, for each each lambda we can find uh, this natural frequency and then coefficient c i can be found out which can be used to compose the deflected shape that deflected shape that we have assumed. Now, after knowing c 1, c 2 etc., we completely know the deflected shape. Let us illustrate this with an example. The problem is to find the fundamental frequency of simply supported beam of length L and uniform cross section and material properties. That means your EI and mass per unit length is constant. So, suppose a simply supported beam is there. Length is L mass per unit length is m and E i is the flexural rigidity. So, we can assume that first mode shape as sine function. So, that mode shape is assumed as sine pi x by L into A. Okay. But you know that for simply supported beam, this is the exact solution that uh, the mode shape function will composed of a series of this uh, sine functions. So, sine pi x by L, sine 2 pi x by L like that. Now, here we are illustrating this procedure taking only one function. So, beam deflection is now assumed shape function is W A equal to A sine pi x by L. Now, this obviously satisfies the boundary condition at x is equal to 0, we have w is equal to 0 and d square w dx square equal to 0. Similarly, at x is equal to L, we have w is equal to 0 and d square w dx square equal to 0. d square w dx square equal to 0 is due to bending moment at the simply supported end is 0. From that condition, uh, these four boundary conditions are there at two ends and we can see this function sin pi x by L easily satisfies the four boundary conditions. Now, according to Galakin method, this E i d to the power 4 w dx to the power 4 that is it is nothing but E i uh, that is L we are operating this uh, that we have discussed earlier that for beam problem this E i L w. So, L is d to the power 4 by dx to the power 4 and therefore, we are doing this thing and this is the uh, term that is coming from inertia expressions that is m omega square w that is the inertia force so, into phi 1 x dx equal to 0 and it is integrated between the limit 0 to L. So, after integration you will find that E i pi to the power 4 by L to the power 4 and when I carry out the fourth derivative find the fourth derivative again the sign function will be there. So, phi 1 is also sign function. So, multiplication of two sign function and that is sin pi x by L will result in sin square pi x by L and its integration with respect to dx is L by 2. So, with that property of sin function that is the, it is a orthogonal uh, sin functions are orthogonal functions. So, sin square this integral is used 
0 to L equal to L by 2 by using this integral we can now get that A it is a common factor so we can take outside the bracket into E i pi to the power 4 divided by L to the power 4 and this is the result of integration minus m omega square into L by 2 equal to 0. So from that we get the natural frequency is equal to omega equal to pi square root over E i by m L to the power 4 and it is exact values. It is also exact value that we can find. So this assumed function is actually the solution of the differential equation. So therefore we get the exact values because the assumed function is chosen in such a way that it satisfies the boundary condition but incidentally it also satisfies the differential equation. So therefore we get the exact natural frequency in this case. Now let us discuss the finite difference method which is also an approximate method how it can be applied to vibration problem. Now in this method the differential equation that we use to solve the vibration problem in continuous system is actually written in the finite difference form. Now for different derivatives the difference forms are different and that have to be known uh, uh, for uh, finding out these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So first we have to divide the domain into different meshes and uh, at the selected point we apply the difference equation. Now the points are located at the joints in a rectangular, triangular or other reference network called the finite difference mesh. In applying this method derivatives of the differential equations are replaced by difference equation and thus we get algebraic equation instead of differential equation. So algebraic equations are easier to solve compared to differential equation and it at each node we get one algebraic equation. So there will be n number of algebraic equation and after applying the boundary conditions and symmetry condition we get appropriate number of unknowns that have to be found from the solution of differential equation. The necessity of finite difference method is obvious and it has been used in many problems in uh, mechanics not only in vibration even now also research is carried out to improve the accuracy of the finite difference method. So sometimes the analytical solutions are very difficult to obtain and may be very tedious. Uh, for example in case of the non-uniform bar or the uh, properties when it is varying with space linearly or non-linearly then the solution of differential equation will be very cumbersome. So in that case the finite difference method can be used. Now with high speed computational facility this method can be more uh, attractive nowadays. Now let us discuss this method in detail. So here we take a example of a bar or beam one dimensional object and it is divided into different number of uh, number of meshes okay so here the number of segments that you are seeing each segment has a length of h so equal mesh size we have taken here h so towards the uh, right we have used the positive uh, number say 0, 0 is the node central node 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 like that and towards left minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 like that. So deflection at node 0 is W0, deflection at 1 is W1, deflection at 2 is W2 like that. Now here so for example here deflection at minus node minus 1 is w subscript minus 1 deflection at minus 2 is w minus subscript uh, 2 like that. Now first let us find the slope at nodal point. Now we are focusing our expression at the node 0 that is the central node 
0 or O. So del, del W by D, del X or DW by DX, if it is a one dimensional element, then the slope is approximated as half, that is the average slope of the right and left segment W0 minus W minus 1 divided by H plus W1 minus W0 divided by H. So final result is 1 by 2H into W1 minus W subscript minus 1. So in this stencil form or molecular form we can write this del W by del X 1 by 2H is a common factor and central nodal value you can see central node is we are taking involving three nodes here to find out the average slope. So 0, 1 and minus 1. So central node you can find there is no W naught. So in the central which is central node is encircled uh, by double uh, you can see double circles are there to write the central nodes. So 0 here is the central node. and towards the left we have written 1 and towards the right we have written minus 1 as the coefficient of this is minus 1 and coefficient coefficient of this is plus 1. So this is in the molecular form the finite difference approximation of the slope or first derivative that is also called the finite difference stencil. Now let us come to the second derivative. In the second derivative we actually have to compute the derivative of slope. So dw by dx we already know and based on that we calculate 1 by h w1 minus w0 divided by h minus w0 minus w minus 1 by h and after simplification we get w minus 1 minus 2 w0 plus w1 divided by h square. Now here you can see if I write this in the molecular form involving these three nodes 0, 1 and minus 1, we can see the central node the coefficient is minus 2. So within the double circle I have written this coefficient minus 2. Towards right we have W1 this deflection and its coefficient is 1. So this is written as 1 within single circle and towards left it is also 1. So we have written 1. So because it is a even derivative we have got symmetrical coefficients. So central node is minus 2 but left and right nodal values are plus 1 and my, uh, plus 1 both and it is at the node uh, 0. So we are writing it is to be operated right and like that w1 and then uh, this w0 and w1. So in this form we can write here w minus 1 minus 2 w0 plus w1. Then third derivative is calculated as 1 by 2h w0 minus 2 w1 plus w2 divided by h square minus w minus 2 minus 2 w minus 1 plus w0 divided by h square. After simplification what we get? After simplification we get 1 by 2 h cube into minus w minus 2 plus 2 w minus 1 minus 2 w1 plus w2. So in the molecular form we can express this. In the central node there is no uh, w0 appearing in the expression. There is no w0 you are seeing here. So in the central node in molecular form we will get 0 which is written inside the two circles. Then if I go towards right it is minus 2 towards left 2 and again further it is 1 minus 1 and you can see the odd derivatives are anti-symmetrical whereas even derivatives are symmetrical. Now fourth derivative has to be obtained and four derivatives are obtained like that del square by del x square into del square w by del x square. So this operator has to be operated on this differential coefficient. So here we can write this 
operator del square by del x square as 1 by h square 1 minus this within two circle it is minus 2 central node and minus 1 and then 1 by h square into 1 minus within the two circle it is minus 2 and minus 1. So, after carrying out this operation we now get this del to the power 4 w by del x to the power 4. If you carry out this term by term multiplication you will get 1 minus 2 1 then here you will get minus 2 then 4 plus 4 and minus 2 again here you will get 1 minus 2 and 1 and if you add this you will get 1 minus 4 then 6 minus 4 and 1. So, this is the molecular form of the finite difference equation of the fourth derivative d del to the power 4 w by del x to the power 4 which is required in beam vibration. Now, if we have a two dimensional structures like membrane and plate then we need to find out the finite difference form of this equation del square w, del square w equal to del square w by del x square plus del square w by del y square this del is the Laplacian operator. So, here if I write like that 1 by h square 1 minus this minus 2 that is the molecular form of this uh, second derivative and then in the y direction we just uh, rotate this 90 degree and we write in this form 1 by h square 1 minus 2 1. So, after adding this we get this uh, the del square w equal to 1 by h square 1 then central node will be minus 4 and uh, right hand side also 1. So, 1 1 1 you are seeing and minus 4. So, this is required in case of membrane equation. Okay. Operator del 4 that is required for plate vibration equation in finite difference form can be written like that. This is the molecular form or finite difference stencil. You see here we require 5 nodes that will be covered by the stencil. This is the central node whose coefficient is 20 and towards uh, right you will get minus 8 and 1 and symmetry is there because it is a fourth derivative. So, here also you will get minus 2 and 1. Similarly, in the vertical line you will get this uh, minus 8 minus 8 1 1 and then on the other corners you will get 2 2 2 2 and you can see it is completely symmetrical. So, this stencil has to be used for forming the finite difference equation in case of plate vibration. Now, we have to apply the boundary conditions. Now, sometimes the uh, stencils are placed at nodes which are close to the boundary and some molecules or uh, some uh, finite difference molecules that we have seen in the stencil will be outside the domain. So, in that case we will assume some imaginary nodes and the deflection of this imaginary point should be replaced by the deflection of the points on the plate or this beam whatever we consider in the real structure. Now, the expression for the deflection of imaginary points in terms of real points are derived for the following boundaries condition one first we take the simply supported condition and then we take the fixed edge condition. So, simply supported condition here you can see this is the say beam and here we are having the node say it is uh, node number 1 and it is node number 0 that is falling on the support and it is minus 1. Now, in the simply supported uh, simply supported and we know that bending moment is 0 and also this uh, deflection is 0. Now, bending moment 0 that means uh, at this node at 
O the bending moment 0 that is the second derivative d square w by dx square equal to 0. So, in finite difference form this is written as 1 by a square w minus 1 minus 2 w naught plus w 1 equal to 0. Now, you can see w naught is falling on the support. So, therefore, deflection is 0. Hence, we get w minus 1 equal to minus w 1. Now, let us come to the fixed end. Now, in the fixed end, we have this uh, slope is 0 at the fixed end. So, therefore, uh, del w by del x equal to 0 and if we use the finite difference form of the first derivative 1 by 2 h into minus w minus 1 minus 0 into w naught plus w 1 because here uh, no coefficient is there in this molecular form or finite difference equation for the first derivative. So, here at the 0 node we write 0 value, 0 coefficient and hence since the slope is 0 we get here w minus 1 equal to w 1 that means deflection of the imaginary point is same as the deflection of the real point. So, that means if I write the deflected shape approximately here for the boundary condition that means here if the deflection is w 1 here also deflection should be equal to w 1 real deflection. Whereas, in case of simply supported beam, in case of simply supported beam, simply supported edge, if we have this simply supported edge and this is the imaginary point O and this is the real point 1. So, deflected shape will be like that. So, that means if the deflection here is w1 at w0 will be minus w1, but you can see this opposite inside. Now, let us apply this method to a problem. We consider a simply supported beam of uniform flexural rigidity and mass, and we divide this uh, beam into four segments and we number the node as this, the central node is numbered as 1 and the other nodes are numbered as 2, 3. Because of symmetry, this node is also 2 and the support is numbered as 3. Now, we required uh, imaginary node for boundary condition to be applicable. So, after division of this beam, we now have to apply the finite difference stencil for the fourth derivative. So, this is the finite difference stencil of the fourth derivative that has to be placed at different nodes to get the required equations. Now, equation of the transverse vibration of beam is known as E i del 4 w by del x 4 plus m del square w by del t square equal to 0. In free vibration case, the motion is harmonic. So, w x t equal to capital W x into sin omega t and therefore, we get d to the power 4 w by d x to the power 4 minus m omega square by E i w equal to 0. Now, this is the finite difference uh, stencil for the fourth derivative. So, let us place this here. So, first placing the stencil at node 1, we are placing this stencil at node 1. You see here node 1 now will get deflection 6 w 1. So, 6 w 1 is written. Then towards the right we have minus 4. So, minus 4 w 2. Towards the left we have also minus 4. So, minus 4 w 2. And at this other nodes far nodes that is w 3 and w 3 and coefficient is 1. So, we have written w 3 coefficient 1 and w 3 coefficient 1 minus m omega square divided by E i into w 1 equal to 0. So, here this factor we can assume some constant so that we can form a eigenvalue in terms of uh, constant say lambda or something, but we first multiply this equation by h to the power 4. 
So multiplying this equation by h to the power 4, then we arrange this in this form 6w1 minus 4w2 minus 4w2 minus lambda w1 equal to 0, where lambda is h to the power 4 m omega square by ei and h is the length of each division which is equal to l by 4. So therefore we are getting lambda equal to m omega square l to the power 4 divided by 64 ei and uh, we cancel this term w3 and w3 because these are falling on the support so the deflection at the support is 0 so w3s are 0. So we are getting from this equation an equation linear equation 6 minus lambda where lambda is the coefficient that uh, depends on the natural frequency which is still not known. So 6 minus lambda into w1 minus 8 w2 equal to 0. Next place stencil at node 2. So this stencil is now taken at node 2. So if you take this at node 2 you will get 6 w2 then minus 4 w1 plus w2. Then you will get on the other side you will get minus 4 w3 plus w0. So w0 is coming which is imaginary point minus lambda w2 equal to 0. Due to simply supported boundary condition we know that w0 equal to minus w2 and based on that w0 is substituted as minus w2 and therefore we get 6w2 minus 4w1 plus w2 minus w2 and this is cancelled and therefore we are getting this you see 6 minus this is 6 minus lambda w2 this w2 w2 will be cancelled and minus 4w1 minus 4w1 so therefore we are getting the determinant as 6 minus lambda minus 8 minus 4 6 minus lambda and this determinant is equated to 0 to find out the lambda which is related to the natural frequency. So expanding this determinant we get lambda square and minus 12 lambda plus 4 equal to 0 which gives the values of 2 lambdas and uh, selecting the lowest value we get the natural frequency fundamental natural frequency as 4.67 root over ei by ml to the power 4. But with comparison to the exact values we get here the error is significant. So that means only the four divisions that we have done for this beam is not enough to get the correct result. So we have to increase the number of divisions here and number of equations will also increase simultaneously and therefore we can increase the accuracy of the method. Okay. So let us summarize today's lecture. In this lecture, Galarkin method was discussed with an example of simply supported beam. In Galarkin method, we required differential equation instead of energy expression as was the case of Rayleigh's method. Rayleigh's method, we require the energy expression. But in Galarkin method, we do not require the energy expression. Instead, we require differential equation. However, both the methods require the approximate shape function. So shape function has to be assumed in both the methods and shape function is to be chosen in Galarkin method uh, in such a way that boundary conditions, geometric as well as force boundary conditions are satisfied. But it is not necessary that the assumed shape function should satisfy the differential equation. Now since it is not the exact solution of the differential equation, the residual error is generated and it is orthogonal to the weight of the function in the domain of the structure. So that orthogonality condition we apply and find the linear equation with uh, different coefficient associated with the shape function. Next we discussed finite difference approximation of the boundary value problem in vibration. Uh, the differential equation is converted into difference form 
nodal difference equation give rise to set of algebraic homogeneous equations and uh, we have uh, we can solve this uh, homogeneous equation find out the non trivial solution uh, for uh, different eigen values here we have demonstrated one problem with simply supported beam only with four divisions so therefore the result was uh, not uh, very accurate so but it yields the approximate results okay thank you very much mm -hmm.